Hey, what's up, guys? It's Bunny. I'm back again for a whole new video. I know you guys haven't seen my face in a while. Um, I've been recording, like, video game videos. I'm sorry for kind of, like, how the lighting is kind of, like, hitting right now. Um, but I'm recording this video because I figured why not have you guys see my face. I kind of started this channel with you guys, you know, seeing my face and me talking about certain things and I figure I might as well keep doing it um, whether I do it every video or every other video or you know when something comes up for me to decide to record a video with my face in it but um anyway I'm gonna get straight into what this video is about um if any of you follow me on social media or know me personally um, you would know that my, pretty much my baby, um, has passed away. Um, his name was Boo Boo. He was my rabbit. I had him for 11 years and like five months. He may have been older because I kind of got him from someone who had him before me. So I don't know his exact age per se. So I can't really say that he may have just been 11 he may have been older than 11 and I just didn't know it and you know but either way um he lived for the most part most of his rabbit life um because rabbits I believe live like 9 to 12 years anyway so for all I know he could have been like 12 years old and I'm just assuming that he was 11 because I had him for 11 years. Um, it's definitely hard. Um, it's different. It's different not having him there making some type of noise like getting water or wanting food or eating food, of, you know, and just being there for me to be able to grab him and pet him. And just the initial, like, face that he had when I had to give him to the vet at the hospital and to to find out that he didn't make it while I'm there trying to figure out what my options are as far as, like, trying to help him. It, it sucks so much because he gave me, like, a purpose. He gave me a reason to feel like I had to get up in the morning he he made me feel like I mattered because as much as people may have found it weird, he has always been there for me. He, um, you know, he never left me or he never put me in a situation where I had to decide to leave someone behind and move on with my life. He... He, he's always been by my side through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like, he's seen me from being in good relationships that ended that may have, like, hurt my heart to relationships that were bad and that I didn't need to be in and that I needed to get out of. And me crying and me coming to him for comfort you know, he, he's just been there. Now, whether he had any thought behind what was going on or he was just kind of just there chilling, like, oh, you know, she feeds me, whatever. I'm going to keep it moving. I have no idea. But what I do know is that he made me feel like I belonged in the house that I live in because he always needed me. Now, I have other pets, obviously. I have a cat and a dog. Um, I'm, I'm close to my cat. And I also, previously, like a long time ago, I had um, lost a cat. And for me, I thought that because I had experienced the loss of a pet, I thought that I'd be able to process it and move on from it very quickly and go about my day and just be okay with the fact that, uh, you know, I uh, had already experienced, um, something of that sort. But 
with Boo Boo, it was different because he was kind of like my best friend. Um, I pretty much told him almost every, I mean, I, not even almost everything. I told him everything about my life and I got so used to, you know, I guess going to him when I had problems that now that he's not around, I, it, it's just weird to come home or just be home and not see him hop around and, you know, look at me or just have that mad face that he usually would have. Like, he'd look like he was mad because that's just how his face was. But, like, he really wasn't mad. Or, like, how he would tip over his bowl to get to his food faster. And I, I also feel like there was a lot of qualities in me and him. Like, he had qualities of, you know, my need for food. Because um, I, I love food a lot. And just my laziness sometimes. And, you know, stuff like that. And I kind of just saw my personality kind of in him. It was just he couldn't talk. And and it, it was the most amazing thing. It was kind of almost like... He was like my spirit animal, so to speak, and it it was a it was so weird to me, but like he he just made sense. Like I just felt like I needed him sometimes more than he needed me because sometimes he'd be off in his own little world, kind of like a cat, like just minding his own business and just chilling and relaxing. And I never thought I'd cry as much as I have. Like, I don't even know if I have any more tears left to give at this point for how much I cried in the past couple of days. Um, I might, you know, because it, it happens at weird moments. Like, I bring him up or I'll just have a little conversation, you know, reminiscing about him being around and boom, tears. Um... I don't know if I'm a cry for this video or not, but what I do know is I'm making this video to remember his memory and not to forget that he was one of the best rabbits I've ever had. He was actually my first rabbit, so when I had him, I kind of had to just figure out how to take care of a rabbit, and just the simple fact that I was able to do it and keep him alive as long as I did from someone who had no experience of ever owning a rabbit prior to him. I, I'm i actually really proud of myself that I was able to do that. Um, I'm also actually really proud of myself that I was able to, um, you know, keep him alive as long as I did. Because a lot of people who have more experience with rabbits couldn't keep a rabbit alive for that long either. Um, and I'm just glad that I gave him... A happy rabbit life and that he died peacefully which I did find that out at the vet um, I have decided to cremate him and get um, a print of his paw print and I think I might turn that into a tattoo um, so I can just have it with me and you know hopefully Having his remains with me might help me in the process of accepting the fact that he's not around. It's still going to hurt. It hurts a lot when I think about it. When I, you know, look at his empty cage and no bedding, no him, no, he's not drinking water, he's not eating food, and just the not seeing him and not being able to touch his fluffy fur and, you know, me play with his ears and... And I, and I remember uh, how he used to hate when I played with his tail and stuff like that. And just him jumping up when I used to call his name. Things of that nature. And just him being himself. Um, I did, you know, notice as the older he got, he started to slow down more and more. And was just eating and kind of chilling. But I figured as much that that would happen as, you know, age kicked in. In the same token, I kind of wish I knew if anything was wrong with him and maybe I would have been able to catch it sooner because it kind of just happened out of nowhere. 
because he was literally fine like a day or two ago and then next thing you know, boom. But also, in the same token, if it was meant for him to go, I wouldn't want to keep him around just for the sake of myself because that's selfish, whether it's a person, a pet, or anything of that nature. If it's time for them to go, you have to, as hard as it is, to say goodbye you have to just kind of say goodbye and accept the fact that we're never meant to live forever and it's the hardest thing to do because he's literally all i had in this house like he was literally like the only thing in this house other than maybe my cat and i guess you could say my dogs but like as far as connection wise goes he was the only thing in this house that like really looked forward to seeing me because Granted, I had other people feed him from time to time when I wasn't around, but, like, I was the main reason why he had a certain type of food, why he got certain treats, why he got, you know, a certain type of bedding or or whatever it is. And to know that I don't have to do that anymore is just weird to me because it, it was like my child kind of got taken away from me and... The, the only thing that I keep playing back in my mind is what his face looked like as I was driving him or as I was taking him to the hospital with a, with a friend. Like, just his face of what it looked like when he was getting weaker and weaker as the minutes went by and just what his face looked like when I handed him off to the nurse or the vet or whoever it was that had to take him. It... It keeps replaying in my mind over and over again, like, I wish I could have helped you more, and I wish I could have maybe taken your pain, or maybe helped you in any more of a way than I already tried to, but I'm also trying not to blame myself, because I did take the initiative to try to help him, and I did, um pay attention to certain signs that indicated that there was something wrong with him and didn't just like let it go on past like a day or two um I also wasn't I knew the time was gonna come I thought maybe I had like maybe another year with him or something um I wasn't quite ready for when it did happen it actually recently just happened Like, this week. It actually happened on Tuesday. Uh, So, I'm just getting used to the process of it. So, it's still fresh. Um, Sometimes I go to sleep. The the first night, I didn't go to sleep at all. I literally cried the whole night, listened to music, sat up, kept looking at his cage, hoping that maybe it was just all some wild, bad dream that I had and... And things like that, and it it wasn't. And I never cried so much in one night in my entire life. And, you know, from time to time, I'll have my moments of crying and, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, and it would just be out the blue. Because it... I don't know, it's weird, because he was literally, like, my baby. Like, he was my everything. He was what made my day better. He was what I looked forward to to come home to. And hopefully, he looked forward to me coming home. Like, and to have him not be there, it's weird. But I'm also happy that he's at peace now, and he wasn't in pain or anything like that. And I... The one thing I do wish I was able to do is I wish I was able to at least hold him one last time. Um, And just, like, hold him, tell him I love him. I hope he's in a happy, safe place. And maybe one day I'll see him soon, whenever that is. And, um... That even if I do get another rabbit, I want him to know that he can never be replaced. Like, the personality he had will never be replaced. And I wanted to mention that with um, anybody who's ever lost a pet. Um, 
that even if you do get another pet and you do, you know, know how to accept the fact that they're not there and they might still hurt, um, getting another pet doesn't necessarily replace the personality of your, um, you know, pet itself that you lost. Um, cause every animal has a different personality, just like every person has a different personality. So you have to go into it with the mindset that they're not going to have the same personality as your last pet. Granted, it might fill that hole of not having a pet, but it's definitely not going to replace the fact that you, um, lost your pet and whatever personality your pet had. Like, I know if I get another rabbit, they're not going to do some of the things that maybe he did or how he acted. Maybe they might have a, a, a personality and I might be slightly nicer than his. Who knows? But at the end of the day, it will fill that void for the most part. And... I'm taking it day by day. Um, I've actually been talking... I actually called a hotline number for um, people who help you go through the process of losing a pet. They also have a website that you can go to. I'll actually put all that information down below for anybody who's lost a pet. Um, it's hard, you know, like the the lady that I talked to. It is, it is very hard. Um, but... It will get easier as the days go on, and it will still hurt, but it won't hurt as much. And I'm waiting for when that happens, when I could wake up and say, like, yeah, it hurts to not have him around, but I'm okay with it. And I don't, I'm not fully okay with it just yet, because I miss holding him, I miss looking at him. I miss just calling his name, just to call his name. I miss just having him as a roommate, per se, if you want to call him that. Um, I just miss every little bit about him. Um, I miss the faces he would make, all of that. And to know that I'll never see that again, and the only way I'll see that is if I look at old pictures or old videos of him that I have. It hurts to know that, but... At the same time, I also know that now he's at peace. Um, hopefully, he's watching over me. And hopefully, he's happy and and living his best life, pretty much. Um, because that's all I would want for him. And I also hope that I was the, the owner that he needed and wanted. I did the best I could for someone who never had a rabbit prior to him. And I want you to know that if you ever get to witness this video, because you never know, you know, he could be a spirit up above watching me make this video as of right now. Um, I hope you, uh, you're enjoying what I'm saying about you. You were a great little guy. You were very smart. You picked up on a lot of things that I didn't even think a rabbit could pick up on. Um, you made me realize how smart rabbits actually are by just the things that you did and I was just grateful to own you and give you a better environment than what you previously had before you were given to me and that I was able to give you a happy long life like I did I didn't think I was capable of it but I did it and I'm happy that I did it and I happy I'm happy I got the experience of owning a rabbit and having a rabbit like you I it brings me back to the days when I first had you. I was afraid to pet you at first because I thought you were going to bite me or something. But, um, you know, it it hurts. You know, I have those moments where I don't cry, but, like, I'm sad about, like, just talking about him. And then I have those moments where I just burst out crying. So I don't. It's an up and down thing. I don't know how to explain it. The only thing I can explain from people I've talked to and the the hotline that I got in touch with that they gave to me when I decided to cremate him and get his paw, paw print, um, you know, inked for me, um, is that everybody grieves differently. 
And some people grieve in a positive way and some people grieve in a negative way. The one thing that I can say that I have made a promise to myself and to him and to anybody around me is everything that I plan on wanting to achieve in my life, whether he was able, what, you know, whether he was here with me physically or just spiritually, I still want to achieve them for not only myself, but this is show boo boo that I'm not giving up on life. Because I also feel like he wouldn't want me to give up on life just because he's no longer around and stop doing the things that I need to do. And I'm not going to do that. And that is my promise that I want to uphold. I want to keep myself from moping around and things like that. And the only other thing that I really have to add to this other than how amazing of a rabbit he was to me was um the the best way to kind of help with grieving is if you mope around and you don't do anything all day and you're just in the house and you're just grieving and you're just like looking around and you're like sulking about the fact that whether it's a person or a pet um it's gonna make the grieving a little bit worse um, I tried to take the advice of the lady that I talked to on the hotline. She said, try to keep yourself busy, try to get things done that, you know, you might want to get done, try to take care of yourself, try to get some rest, things like that. Um, because the one thing you don't want to do is not take care of yourself because you're grieving. And when you are grieving, you're more prone to do that. And I had a moment of kind of doing that. I'm trying to like not do that. Because I know that's not good for me. And I know my rabbit wouldn't want me to do that. So I'm going to try not to do that. But like I said before, I'm going to keep, I'm going to uh, post down below the phone number and the website. And the website, I believe, has um, groups you can sign up for. So someone can help you um, with the process of, your, of you going through ha losing your pet. Um, they may or may not have the same pet as you that passed away but they're gonna tell you what and these are actual people who lost their pets they're gonna tell you what they went through when it came to uh grieving how they accepted it things things like that so you could talk to someone who can actually relate to your pain and i was actually um planning on looking at possible groups for me to sign up for um talking to the lady really did help um it made it a little bit easier. Um, granted, uh, I want to possibly call again because you can call as much as you need to um, because I believe they're there um, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Friday. I believe if I'm wrong, you can always probably find out on the website or when you call the phone number. But if they're busy with someone else... Um, all you have to do is leave a message, your phone number, and why you're calling, and they'll call you right back. Um, for the most part, it's usually going to be the same rotation of the same people. So you will find someone to pick up the phone to talk to you. Um, like I said, I'll leave all that down below. i also leave my social media like I usually do so you can reach out to me. Or you could comment down below if you like this video or if you want more videos like this where you get to see my face again. Um, also, if you have video ideas, comment down below or reach out to me on my social media. I'm Bunny. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys um, are not going through the same thing I'm going through with uh, the loss of a pet. But I hope you guys, if you are, I hope you guys are taking it well. And if you need any advice, if you don't want to talk to the, the, uh, the pet loss hotline um you can reach out to me down below or even on my social media and i will try to give you the best advice that i can because i'm not a trained professional i want to let you know that i'm just a regular person that's grieving over their pet and going day by day but i'm bunny i hope the bunny gang enjoyed also don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and i'll see you next time